Yes, he is. Well, no, maybe. I am not sure if any single person in the whole metal sphere has a more divisive voice than this man right here, Dave Mustaine. It's not even a case of if you like it or don't. It really seems to be a case of tolerate his vocals or detest his voice. But is this justified? He certainly has a unique voice, but is he actually a bad singer? Or is there just something intangible about his voice that makes people dislike it? But before we get to the meat of the video here, remember to leave a comment, hit that like button, and subscribe for more metal content. I also have several deep dives on Megadeth songs here as well, more of them coming in the future, so stay tuned. Hello my friends, we meet again. It's been a while, where should we begin? To begin with here, is there some sort of criteria or definition we can use to judge whether or not someone is a good singer? Well first off, and this is sort of like the bare minimum for a singer, is he on pitch? Can he sing in key? Well, it's clear that he can sing on key and does. I don't really remember ever hearing a single Megadeth song where he's off key or singing poorly, you know, wrong notes or anything like that. And yes, I have indeed listened to every single Megadeth song. Listen to this one here. And nor do I really remember hearing any off notes in the several times I've seen Megadeth live or any of the live performances on YouTube. But you know, I mean, like singing on pitch is a very, very small part of the overall gestalt of someone singing. The amazing YouTuber Chris Lipe has a very good point he made in this video here. How does the singer conversate with the listener? What emotions are they trying to convey? How do they use their voice to tell a story? Do their vocal emotions match the emotions of the song? Do the lyrics and the delivery match? These are all things you need to think about, and notice how here I did not mention at all timbre, range, and pitch. When you begin to look at the singing of Dave Mustaine in this light, I think it's really hard to argue against him being an actual good singer. But we also must must take into account the music around the singer. You know, you can't take Pavarotti and put him in a thrash metal band and expect it to sound good. You know, it might even sound bad in that context, despite him being a renowned great singer. And you know, I'm sure we've all heard the term over singing a song, heard anthems and other things like that where people over sing a song. And thus, the music accompanying the singing must be taken into account. You cannot over sing a song, nor do you want to under sing the song. You want to match the song. And I think Dave Mustaine does this very well. And the first song that I want to highlight here as an example of this, of an example of Dave Mustaine's great singing, is Wake Up Dead. And real quick, let's just look at the lyrics, the poem to which the music is being set to. Wake Up Dead is about cheating on your lover, staying out way too late, drinking excessively, and just general dog water behavior. In this song, Day's vocals match these dark, deceitful, and unfaithful emotions perfectly. His voice sounds very dark and evil here. He almost sort of drunkenly grumbles out the first verse. It really matches the lyrics and story of the song perfectly. And this first verse here is an example of what many could consider bad singing, but when looked upon into the context, of the lyrics, the emotions, and the story that the song is trying to say, it actually turns out to be very good singing in this context. Later on in the song, the lyrics change in tone and the song rises in intensity. It goes from drunken unfaithfulness to the realization and panic that in fact, he has ruined their relationship and may indeed wake up dead. <laughs> And here he is using the higher register of his voice to convey this panic and realization. It works very well, and even in the very small amount of actual sung lyrics in the song, we know exactly what the person in the song is feeling, and the emotions are being conveyed to us exactly. They're being conveyed to us, the listener. And the next song we'll take a look at here is the song In My Darkest Hour. I will be doing a deep dive on the song soon, but in general, this song is about someone going through a period of extreme emotional distress and depression, realizing how lonely he is and how alone he feels in his darkest hour. And in terms of emotions, what Dave is trying to express really comes across through his vocals. His voice feels pained, especially in the first verse, where the frequent change in dynamics really highlights the emotional vulnerability of the song. You know, when someone is sort of in distress, they can go from quiet to yelling, you know, back and forth. And especially on the line, quote, feel so cold, so cold, no one cares for me, he almost goes completely into fry voice and he croaks out the first part of the line before moving into more of a belting voice right after. And out of context and with no compression or production behind it, this line would probably sound terrible. 
but it absolutely fits the emotions in this conversation. And another line I want to highlight from the song is here. Here he is relating how he is consumed by this pain, yet the other person scoffs and sort of brushes him off with a laugh. The anger and vitriol in his voice here is palpable, and we can feel the anger burning from his delivery that he gives us. I think we can all agree that his vocals on Rust in Peace are fantastic and perfectly fit the hyper-aggressive sound of that album. I mentioned this in the Five Magics deep dive that I did, but Five Magics has some really quite strange sounding vocal parts, which again, out of context, may sound quite whack, but in the context and the story of that song, work perfectly. He truly sounds like an unhinged wizard hopeful in the song, looking to acquire vast magical powers. Great stuff, and definitely not what we might call good traditional singing, but absolutely perfect vocals for the song. And we can tell this is the case by how the remasters butcher it with newer vocal takes, which are more focused on being sung normally rather than in the strange sort of unhinged croaking way that he sings Five Magics originally on the 1990 version. And okay, yes, I think we can all admit that Dave Mustaine does the unhinged, pained emotions very well. But what about the traditional singing? Can he pull this off too? You know, let's take a look at a few of the examples here. Euthanasia would be my pick for best traditional vocal performance from Dave. And while I could spend all day going on and on about the various songs on this album here, let's take a look at the song, The Killing Road. Now, you know, let me just say that of course he is no Ronnie James Dio or Bruce Dickinson, but here on Euthanasia, he does a very good job, especially on this song in the chorus. The band is playing a very cool descending riff, which over top of it, Dave sings an ever rising vocal line. I really doubt that even the most ardent Dave Mustaine haters could consider this bad singing. Like, this is good singing. I think almost everybody could consider this good traditional singing here by Dave. The song Blood of Heroes also features some excellent singing from Dave in the higher register of his voice in belting volume. You know, just great stuff here as well. And yeah, there's lots of great singing on this album, and these are just some of my personal favorites. I could go on and on. Euthanasia, his singing is really at top form here. And the next song that I want to feature here is actually from Risk, the song Time the Beginning. All the time. Dave sings very tenderly here, in a very somber song about the passage of time. You know, it's excellent, very soft singing here. The softer, more vulnerable approach works really well with his more nasally timbre to his voice. I really like the change in dynamics on the line, time has brutal hunger. <laughs> He adds more of his chest voice with some added grit and it works very well to contrast the rest of the song, which again is sung in this very gentle and vulnerable way, which fits perfectly with the lyrics and the music that that song is set to. The ending of Back in the Day Off the System Has Failed is another good example of Dave's traditional singing. It's clear that this ending is a purposeful throwback to some of the bands which inspired the thrash scene back in the day. You know, more the new wave of British heavy metal bands such as Iron Maiden. And while he does not have the operatic drama and vibrato that Bruce Dickinson has, his voice is still excellent here, providing us both with great sung melodies as well as sing-along O's to go along with it. And another song off this album, which I just want to highlight here, and I think that's excellent songwriting, is the song of Mice and Men, specifically during the verses. When I was just 17, I thought that I knew everything. He sings a very, very catchy melody, which sort of goes up and down, and details some of the trials, hopes, and downfalls of his career. And you can really feel the emotional weight that some of these lines have on Dave. And he sings it very well, 
And some of those lines really hit. You know, this melody is perfectly in his range. At 25, I was surprised that I was even half alive. Another example of something in between his gruff thrash voice and his more traditional singing is the song How the Story Ends off of Endgame. Similar in range to the verses of Of Mice and Men, he finds a great middle ground here between his natural singing voice and the more gruff and aggressive thrash style of singing. Voice in the well and does a good job matching the whole vibe of Endgame, which is sort of like this middle ground between thrash and melody, I guess you could say. In addition, sometimes Dave gives us these somewhat goofy performances, which only he could pull off. Hello me, meet the real me, and my misfits way of life. And this style is what I'm sure most people would point towards when they say he is a poor singer. However, he really only uses this style very strategically on songs which warrant these more out there performances. And most of them are actually from Countdown to Extinction, which is also the most commercially successful record. Go figure, maybe most people heard this and heard some of the singing here and just sort of write his singing off for the rest. I, I don't know. It's certainly something to think about and certainly his vocals on a lot of these songs are an acquired taste. Sweating Bullets is an example of using this unhinged, goofy style expertly. I mentioned it on the deep dive I did on the song recently, but in this song, Dave sounds legitimately mentally unwell. And this is certainly not good traditional singing, but the emotions and lyrical content which is being conveyed match perfectly to the maniacal delivery he gives on this song. No other vocal style would work on this song, really. And another song I want to highlight here, and one of my favorites from Countdown, is Psychotron. song with a similar unhinged vibe to Sweating Bullets, Psychotron is a song about a psycho cyborg. Simple as. His vocal approach also works well here. You know, it's not good in a traditional sense, but good in terms of matching the music and theme of the song, and just being catchy and something you could sing along to, it's great. Symphony of Destruction is probably Megadeth's most popular song, and is often mocked for some of the more out there vocal lines, famously by Lane Staley. Watch him become a god. And yes, you know, I'm not gonna deny, some of these lines are pretty goofy. But he does a good job in portraying the subtle buildup of military powers with his sort of vocals that sound like he's ready to explode and yell at any time, right? Acting like a robot! And his singing in the chorus is pretty good as well. Uh, shout out to David Elson for some great harmonies that goes along with it. Very underrated contribution to lots of these Megadeth songs. And as he's gotten older, the band made the great decision of tuning down for their newest albums. This allows the songs to be in the key of the open strings, which is usually D, and thus allows Dave to sing two steps down in a lower key. This works really well on songs like Life and Hell. I'm gonna live and die in His lower register has a lot of grit to it, and the gritty voice works very well in the faster, more thrash-focused music of Dystopia and the Sick, the Dying, and the Dead. His vocals at the end of Fatal Illusion are also excellent. In my opinion, Dave, while not the best traditional singer, is more than adequate in that role, but he truly shines in the more unhinged and aggressive songs, where his very unique voice is allowed to be more insane and gritty, and this comment that was left on one of my videos sums it up very well. Megadeth fans gotta realize they are allowed to enjoy bad vocals. And you know what? This guy is totally right. Even if his vocals are bad, and I'm just simply glazing Dave throughout this video, I enjoy them. And if you enjoy them too, then let others trash his vocals. Because in the end, you're the one listening to it, not them. Well, maybe they are listening to it, but you're the one listening to it and enjoying the music. So if you see someone on Reddit or whatever saying that Dave Mustaine is a bad singer, just leave it. Who cares?